What's up, guys? Welcome back to Wrench Capital. Human emotion and buying the dip, buy the fear, sell the greed is a very popular saying among successful investors. Reason why I want to talk about this specifically today is because I have 32 different stocks pulled up in front of me here. Take a look. We're seeing a lot of selling in the market, a lot of turmoil lately in the past couple of weeks. And there's a very popular statistic out there as well that people use to discredit people that are involved in the market, particularly day trading, and that's 78% of day traders lose money. Now, why exactly is that? You may think that statistic would be closer to 50-50, but aside from the fundamentals, aside from the technical analysis, it all comes down to one thing, and that's human emotion. Now, we've talked about, particularly with AMC and GameStop, is a very good example of this recently. When, back on the uh, March 10th, I believe it was, we saw very blatant short attacks on GameStop and AMC at the exact same minute. Now, we talked yesterday about funds maybe taking advantage of the short sale rule, short sale restriction. Now, why is it that that works so well? It's because the funds and the groups that make these plans understand that the human emotion is going to do most of the selling off for them so they can get a better entry taking advantage of that SSR. And that repeatedly works very well. Now, having emotion in a lot of parts of life is, is a good thing, right? Being emotional about money and the markets is the opposite of what you want to be. And the majority of people haven't figured that out or aren't able to control their emotion. And that's why the majority of day traders specifically will lose based on statistics, right? But based on that statistic, that still leaves it open for 22% of people to win and likely win big. Those people are the long-term players. Those are the ones that do this as a career. Now, what makes them different from the other 78%? It's the fact that not only do they understand the fundamentals and the TA, they're feeding the strategy that has worked for them, but they also figured out a long time ago how to control their emotion. Now, what I have pulled up here is a short-term example. I'm also going to lay out a couple of long-term examples. But from a day trading perspective, I have today's Tesla chart pulled up. And as you guys can see, on multiple occasions, we had massive, massive fear on a short-term scale, right? These are one-minute candles. And then we have our signal to buy day trading, not necessarily for scalping, right? Two different things. And the problem that a lot of people have is they're going to make their purchase up here or maybe even up here because they see green and they're comfortable with that. It's easy to buy when things are green and you expect them, based on human emotion, to continue being green. Now, where it gets difficult for a lot of people, a lot of newer traders in particular, and that's okay, guys. Everyone's new at some point. This is difficult for everybody when they're new. You just have to learn how to control it. It's not easy to buy into a long position, open a long position, right at about this area here, when all you've seen in the past you know, 20 minutes is red. But from a TA standpoint, we have all three indicators pointing to buy. We have, we're hitting the VWAP support. We have our MACD and the, and the red signal line down, bottoming out, and particularly here, making that crossover again here on the daily, which we do use from an intraday standpoint for scalping and day trading. And also our RSI down here is completely bottomed out, actually testing oversold territory. That's three out of three from a trading perspective. Now, is this an in-depth day trading tutorial? Of course not. There's a lot more that goes into that. You have to be watching the broader market um, also, when you're trying to day trade just one stock, you can't just blow off the rest of the market. But from a surface level perspective, where did buying the red get them? Well, it got them quite a bit of profit percentage wise, at least here on Tesla, right? And that's exaggerated if you bought call options. Now, again, later in the day, it repeats itself. We have a lot of fear, even if you bought in any of this area where we're getting down toward that view up support, right? Which is a signal of fear in that particular stock intraday short term. And look at our indicators down here. The MACD, very much so overextended to the downside, far below neutral, and the RSI also touching that oversold territory. Now look, what I've also done, and I picked a random stock, Apple, just happened to be on my watch list. I pulled it up. Look, we had aggressive selling, you guys. People that buy that fear as we hit our indicators, if I pull them up right here, they're going to be overextended to the downside, and they see that bounce, right? Of course, being a smaller percentage gain, but we're not always looking for 10% winners. These small wins add up. Now, that's from a short-term perspective. And of course, there's scenarios where we see aggressive selling that lasts the whole day and they blow through the indicators. But more often than not, when we see this extreme fear and the markets are functioning properly, we do end up seeing these bounces. The difference is the people that bought that fear are going to be the winners and the people that were fearful and let their emotion get the best of them are going to lose, unfortunately. Now, what I've done here, guys, is I've opened up 
um, SPY, which is an ETF based on the SP500. This is a 180 day, four hour chart. And I just wanna point some things out. Guys, if you buy the S&P 500 and hold it for 10 years, chances of you making money are pretty great. But what are we always trying to do? We're always trying to lower our cost basis on our longer term positions. You need to think about it as lowering your cost basis always, right? That's why we oftentimes sell covered calls against our long term positions to lower that cost basis. So now, even if you bought in to SPY here at this peak, when we're seeing large amounts of greed in the market, Look, you were still positive within a few months, right? And you're in the green now, certainly. But better yet, to get a better overall cost basis, you buy this fear on the way down, averaging in always slowly on these long-term positions, right? And you maybe you buy here, and maybe you buy here, and maybe you make a purchase here. We let it ride up. You make another purchase here, and you make here, and you make another purchase down here, okay? Now, what you've effectively done is your cost basis is somewhere around this 330 to 340 range, Rather than buying when it's easy and having your cost basis be up in that, you know, 350 to 360, even up here into 370, 380 range. And look, maybe we saw lots of fear. So you made a purchase somewhere in here. Okay. And we saw more fear. You made a purchase over here and down here. Right. Right. Guys, particularly in ETFs, right? Proven ETFs and stocks on specific companies that you truly believe in. And only you can answer that question for yourself. Historically, of course, the market has a reputation of going up over time. So from a longer term perspective, all you're trying to do is get in at the lowest cost basis possible. Now, look here, for example, we look down here at the MACD and the RSI. Two of our favorite indicators, right? Even on the long term, the MACD is showing a lot of fear. The RSI as well, showing a lot of fear, hitting that oversold territory, which of course doesn't happen quite as often on the 180 day. Now also here, same deal. Very, very overextended to the downside, both. And over here as well. See that? Now, what I've done here is I pulled up the two year, one day chart on SPY. And I just want to point a few things out to you guys. Last year, right, when we had the sell off brought on by the pandemic, investors that loaded up heavily down in this region where there was massive, massive fear. Look at here on the, on the two year, one day chart where the MACD and the RSI don't tend to be very sensitive to testing these overbought and oversold levels, very, very overextended. We've only seen the RSI on, on the two year, or I'm sorry, yeah, the two year one day, test these oversold levels a few times, guys. And that was one of them. Now, people that loaded up down here during the fear are up 50, 60, 70% on that one investment over the course of 12 or 13 months. And that's strictly speaking shares, which is an incredibly, incredibly impressive uh, gain just in the SPY over the course of 12 or 13 months, guys. Most long-term investors are seeing gains of 10 to 12% per year. A lot of funds are happy to get that. And these people saw 50, 60, 70% in one year, just buying the fear and holding. Now, my last example here, guys, I have the queues pulled up on the 180 day, four hour chart. I want to point out down here, look at these indicators, guys, both of these, the MACD and the RSI, very overextended to the downside. We were seeing a lot of fear in the market. We still somewhat are, but especially in today's world, if you make this comparison to this sell-off back here, guys, within a, a month or two in today's market, we're typically back on track and it happens over and over again. You have new investors complaining that they should have bought the dip. Uh, hindsight is 2020, but the problem is every time we roll over with new investors coming in and out of the market, Human emotion gets the best of them, and a lot of times they're out in six months, unfortunately. What we're trying to do here on this channel, guys, is breed a lot of you guys, if not all of you, if I could, into successful, stoic traders when you're at your battle station, that's your desk, your laptop, whatever you're using, your phone, to be as successful as you can in the market so that you're able to free up time, guys. If you're going to a nine to five, like we talked about, you know, about a week ago in one of the AMC videos, Sitting down and really studying the charts, learning the TA, tipping the markets into your favor, keeping an eye on the fundamentals, and most importantly, controlling your human emotion. All those things are going to pave your way to success in the markets, guys, and give you the tools that you need and make you into the trader that you need to be to be able to maybe quit that nine to five if you don't like going to it. And this isn't to say that you need to be a stoic person in general. When you're hanging out with your family, guys, you still want to be that caring and, and loving individual for them that positive person to be for them. But when it comes down to it, the people that sit down at their desk, open up their charting software, understand that TA, pay attention to the fundamentals, and are very stoic in their view of the markets, 
when you get to that point where you can buy a very aggressive dip without feeling that emotion, that is the key. And of course, be smart about this, guys. Don't over leverage yourself to the point where you end up getting a margin call. Be smart, be stoic. And then when you make your money for the day and get up and leave and your long term investments are handled, you can become again that that caring individual, that positive individual that you need to be for your family to uplift them. But when you're a trader, guys, and you sit down at your desk, it has to be, don't talk to me, I'm busy. And when the red candles, when the blood is flowing, you need to be able to not hesitate to hit the buy button. That's what separates the one out of every five people that apparently, due to the statistic, is profitable when they're day trading. And if, even if you're more interested in long-term investing, it's going to lower your cost basis and you are going to do better than the majority of people in this market who just buy on a consistent basis, averaging in, even during big green. So guys, don't change as an individual, but when you sit down again at your battle station, you're at war with the market and you need to take this seriously. If you want this to be your life and if you want to take your life in the direction that you want it to go, it certainly is doable, but keep that in mind. You have to learn the TA, the fundamentals, keep an eye on everything. And again, most importantly, control that, that trait that makes the majority of people lose if they are trading, being human emotion. We don't want to be those people here on this channel. So that's it, guys. And the more you do this, the less emotional it is. And the more you see your portfolio green, the easier it gets to buy when it's fearful. Treat the markets, treat trading like you're going to war. Study it, know it front and back. Develop that ability to overpower your own emotion. And in the long term, you will be successful and you will be one of those 22%. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next one.